UFC Mexico goes down this weekend. We got Brandon Moreno versus Brandon Royval. The battle of the Brandons. Whoever loses. I, I don't know. Huh? Anyways, the first fight of the night on the main card is Chris Duncan versus Manuel Torres. Chris Duncan's on a three fight win streak. He lost his first contender series fight. to go back fight in bulgaria but now he's back three fight win streak in the ufc on the other side you got manuel torres manuel torres is looking good man three and oh in the ufc three ko's he's only 28 years old chris duncan's a little older i believe he's 31 i got chris duncan in this fight and chris duncan is actually the underdog and i understand why because manuel torres has three ko's in a row in the ufc which is very impressive but i'm not gonna lie when i seen the tape manuel torres he wasn't impressing me manuel was getting caught by a lot of shots by Nicholas Moda and Moda's like 5'7 at lightweight. Chris Duncan is a very fundamentally sound fighter. He's one of those fighters. He got the pillow hands kind of going on. His last opponent, Ash Moose, was in there with literally one hand. He hurt his left hand and wasn't throwing it and Chris Duncan couldn't get him out of there. So that's concerning. Like I, I really don't know if I actually want to pick Chris Duncan now that I really think about it, but I'm going to lock in Chris Duncan. Manuel Torres gets hit way too much. He's super aggressive, but I do think Chris Duncan, he's got good leg kicks, good body kicks, and he's got IQ. And I don't know if Manuel Torres got that IQ on him. But look, the way that Chris Duncan wins this fight, he stays disciplined. He uses his one-two. He mixes up the kicks and he keeps Manuel Torres at bay. Because Manuel Torres, he can crack. That's one thing he can do. But he's going to try and bull rush. He's just going to try to get in there and just find a shot. That's his whole game plan. Chris Duncan is better fundamentally, but sometimes that shit don't matter in MMA at all. Like, you could be the best fundamental fighter and you get chinned. You know what I'm saying? So Chris Duncan, got to use that IQ, got to use the kicks, got to make him respect you or he's going to get KO'd. That's, it's, it's as simple as that. But I think Chris Duncan, he's a good enough fighter. Manuel Torres, Manuel Torres going to throw some crazy shit in there. Oh, shit. Just fucking had an earthquake. So I got Chris Duncan. This next matchup, this shit is just fucked up. I'm not going to lie. Yasmin Howergy, 10-1. and one. In the UFC, she's 2-1. and one. But here's the thing. Yasmin in her last fight, she got chinned in 10 seconds. She was looking like Volk out there. Just got absolutely chinned by Denise Gomez. Grounded and pounded. It ended in 15 seconds. I got in my notes. That chin concerns me. She got dropped by Estela Nunes as well. So she's a little bit chinny. But this matchup is still fucked up. And you're probably thinking, damn, like they put Yasmin in there with the killer. No, 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 no. Yasmin is the killer in this situation. Because she's taking on Sam Hughes. Sam Hughes is 8-5, and 3-4 and four in the UFC. She's coming off a win. But the win is against just an absolutely terrible MMA fighter. Fighter. But look, but look, I'm gonna keep it short and simple. Yasmin is sending Sam Hughes to the gulag. Yasmin is only 24 years old. And look, she just got her ass knocked out. So if you don't think her ass was in the gym working every single day trying to get better, then you're mistaken. And at that age, 24 years old, bro, she getting better every single day. And look, Sam Hughes, she's tough, but she's not a very powerful striker. She's crafty in there. And those are great adjectives that I'm giving you, but that doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't matter because Yasmin is going to demolish her with her power. Yasmin has very good legs kicks she's a very powerful striker the way she beat Estela Nunez that shit was scary she literally was bouncing her head off the canvas with hammer fists so I expect Yasmin to finish her in the first round I'm not even gonna lie to you I think Yasmin's gonna come at her she's a hungry dog she's coming off a loss and yeah the UFC is just fucked up for this matchup I, I don't know man this is this is a mismatch the next fight up is probably my favorite fight on the entire card Raul Raul now, fuck! Raul Rosas Jr. versus Ricky Tercios. Rosas is 3-1 and one in the UFC. Tercios is 2-1 and one in the UFC. Raul Rosas Jr., the way he's able to grapple and take his opponents back with such ease is the most impressive part about his entire game. I mean, for him being only 19 years old, I can't even imagine in like 10 years when he's like 29. What the, f like, what the fuck is Raul Rosas Jr. going to be doing when he's 29 years old? Anyways, Rosas is coming off a KO win over Terrence Mitchell. They both were just swinging and Terrence Mitchell was the one that got caught. The problem with Raul Rosas right now is that he doesn't know how to be the nail in a fight at all. He just knows pure offense. It happened against Christian Rodriguez. He blew his load too fast. 
the fuck am I doing, bro, with my life? Like, fuck. And Christian Rodriguez in the second and third round was able to just overwhelm Rosas with the grappling. And Rosas was just tired. So Rosas, in order to beat a lot of top level people, he's going to have to be able to slow down because he's not going to be able to get everyone out of there. On the other side, Ricky Tercios, he's a straight dog. The problem, though, for Tercios in this goddamn fight is that he has horrible takedown defense. And that is probably the worst thing on this world that he could have in this fight. Bad takedown defense. He's very crafty with his jujitsu off of his back, but he was getting taken down by a 5'4 man. At least he looked 5'4 on the screen. I don't know how tall he is. Not the Vidad. The next fight we got is Daniel Zellhuber versus Francisco Prado. Daniel's 14 and one in the UFC. He's three and one. Prado is 12 and one, and he's one and one in the UFC. One thing that Daniel Zellhuber is good at, he's got good recovery. In his last fight versus Christian Giagos, he got rocked, but he got straight back to it. His frame at 155 is very advantageous because the man is 6'1". And another thing that Daniel does very well that only high level fighters do is that he's able to slowly find his range in a fight. Versus Christian Giagos, he was slowly pressuring Giagos and Giagos got uncomfortable and then Zell Huber started finding the mark and really started to dominate the fight then he finished the fight with the submission on the other side you got Francisco Prado Prado is like a mini P.E.K.K.A he's compact but he's muscular as hell he throws everything with fight ending intentions and in his last fight against Azaitar I mean he just absolutely he was crafty with it he faked the body shot and then threw a spinning elbow dropped Azaitar and then he was just banging his head against the canvas it was a nasty finish now look the one thing about Zell Huber that I didn't like is that he got caught by Giagos and if you get caught by Francisco Prado it's wraps and Zell Huber likes to throw in the pocket and again against a guy like Prado that is a horrible idea because Prado's whole game is I'm gonna get in there I'm gonna boom 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 and just fuck you up I'm just gonna get in the pocket and throw some heat and I think Zell Huber is going to be like, you know what? Let's do that. And I think Zell Huber is going to get caught by Francisco Prado. Zell Huber has all the skills in the world to defeat Francisco Prado. All he has to do is stay on the outside, but I don't think he's going to do it. Because if you're getting caught by Christian Giagos, I have a feeling you will be caught by Francisco Prado. And Zell Huber, he's not like a super powerful MMA finisher. Like he got the submission, but like he doesn't have the most powerful hands in the world at all. And I think although Zell Huber is the overall more skilled fighter, I think Francisco Prado is powerful enough and crafty enough to find that chin or a body shot or something to stop Zell Huber. So I'm going with Francisco Prado. Francisco Prado is the underdog in this fight but I just don't see it like Zell Huber has to really fight perfectly for 15 minutes and I just don't see his style of fighting being able to produce the performance that he needs against a guy like Francisco Prado so yeah I'm going Prado by KO in the co-main event we got a rematch between Volkanovski's sons Yair Rodriguez and Brian Ortega look I'm gonna keep this I'm gonna try and keep this as simple as possible Brian Ortega hasn't won a fight in 1224 days and Brian Ortega is one of the best at jiu-jitsu in this sport he just is but these two have already fought and in that first fight I seen enough I seen enough I know what Brian Ortega is bringing to this fight and it ain't enough. Brian Ortega in that first fight was getting his ass pieced up. And every time he faces a good striker, my man gets pieced up. He's got no defense on the feet. He just doesn't. The defense on the feet is non-existent. Max Holloway taught the man how to put up his left hand. And look, I know I'm making jokes about Brian Ortega, but Brian Ortega did get Yair against the fence a few times. He really didn't do too much. He tried to get Yair to the canvas, but he really struggled to do that. And I don't think Brian Ortega has like fallen off or anything. I think he just injuries and things like that. But I do think Yair is a caliber above the man. Yair isn't incompetent on the ground either. He knows how to fight off his back and I don't think he would make it easy for Brian Ortega to get a submission at all. I think it would be super difficult and Brian Ortega struggled to even get the takedown versus Yair. Yair is going to piece him up. That's just what's going to happen. Brian Ortega, he's, it's just not good enough, man. That's the truth. The striking is nowhere where it needs to be at the UFC top level at featherweight. It's just not. Maybe if he was a fucking heavyweight and he could do this shit, it would work, but he's not. And T-City, He's been out of the octagon for a year and a half. And Yair Rodriguez had 2023, 20, two championship fights against the bald bandits of 145. He beat Josh Emmett. He lost to Volk. But I just think the experience is going to be too much for Brian Ortega to overcome. That coupled with the fact that he's got no defensive capabilities at all. Yeah, it's a recipe for fucking disaster. And I actually think that Yair is going to find the KO. And the reason why I say that is because I know I keep harping on the fact that Brian Ortega has no defensive capabilities on the feet. But that being said, Yair Rodriguez throws weird fucking kicks and weird punches. And TCD has a chin. But the way that you knock out people with chins is that you hit them with something that they're not expecting. 
expecting. And Yair Rodriguez is the embodiment of throwing weird shit and landing shots that his opponents don't see coming. I mean, look at the Korean zombie. So I do think that Yair Rodriguez is going to find a KO versus Brian Ortega. He's only been stopped once by the doctor, though, against Max Holloway. But I think his time is up, man. I think Yair in five rounds, he going to find something nasty and land it on Brian Ortega. Last but not least, Brandon Moreno versus Brandon Roy Val, the two sons of Alexander Pantoja. Now, I know I'm recycling my old joke, but this motherfucker Alexander Pantoja has beat Brandon Roy Val twice and beat Brandon Moreno three times. So these two men are 0-5 versus the champ. That's insane. Brandon Moreno has a great jab he's got a great body kick he's got a great leg kick and brandon roy val has more of a scrappy fight style on the feet he's not as technically sound as brandon moreno now the reason that both of these men really lost to alexander pantoja was they could not defend a fucking takedown to save their life brandon moreno did a better job against pantoja than brandon roy val did because i mean that man brandon roy val i mean his takedown defense is fucking terrible for flyweight at 40 percent yo that shit is cooked it's cooked it, it's just not good enough brandon roy val though he's got a nice double jab he's got some good kicks to the body but i'm gonna just cut straight to the chase here brandon moreno is going to beat brandon roy val these two have actually already fought and their first fight ended in a weird way because brandon roy val hurt his shoulder and it popped out and the fight was stopped with one second left in the first round roy val's coming off a tough fight versus pantoja he's jumping straight into another training camp usually when guys just end up fight and go straight into another training camp it usually doesn't end well because your body needs time to fucking relax and chill after you go through a five round fight with the champ and Roy Val in an interview said that he was injured during that fight so I don't think he's coming into this fight 100% no fighter does but if you say that you're injured in that fight then that means that he probably had a pretty bad injury and Roy Val also said that he started training after the holidays so you know my man was eating them pot pies he was eating that turkey he was eating that ham he was eating those chocolate bars he was eating those those cookies he was eating everything and i just think that brandon moreno is better on the feet i think brandon moreno's jab is better i think he's quicker than brandon roy val i think he's more powerful and i do think brandon moreno has the better grappling so in almost every department i think brandon moreno is better the only place i don't really think brandon moreno is better than roy valin is on his back so maybe roy val can get a takedown because both of these men aren't the best at stopping takedowns I also think that roy val sometimes is a little bit wild with this striking like he leaves his hand down a little bit more than Moreno and so I see opportunities for Moreno to land something big on Roy Val but Roy Val that man has cardio for days so I don't think Brandon Moreno will get him out of there but I do think he's gonna beat him up a little bit just because he's the more skilled fighter also man I just be hearing all the time that Brandon Moreno is a hungry dog the man's always in the gym and he lost in last July to Pantoja and I know that man's been clamoring to get back in that octagon and when you take a loss and anything that shit gets you going especially with a guy like moreno that shit hurts his heart that man has been in the fucking gym and i just think it's hard to beat the second best flyweight in the world coming off a five rounder against the champ at flyweight all the skills are necessary to win the fight because they're so fast because they're small and i just think roy val's turnaround time is too quick and brandon moreno has had a full camp he's prepared he's hungry and i just think he's better almost everywhere in this fight i think brandon roy val will have his moments but in the end brandon moreno will be victorious.